What's crack a -like? It's your boy Broshmo, just in case you did not know so. And we're back again, once again, with another predictive experimental mock draft. This time we're going to take a look at what if, well, Trey Lance is the third overall pick to the Niners. Because, hey, rumors came out, man. We did Mac Jones yesterday. Today we take a look at, well... If it's Trey Lance. Again, rumors came out today that they're between Jones, they're between Lance. Shanahan even went as far as saying, hey, you know, if uh we got we're we we're narrowed it down to five quarterbacks. So kind of crazy, but what we're gonna take a look at that, what a uh draft may look like if that truly unfolds. But go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. Tomorrow you will be getting well, a variety of content. You're gonna be getting uh well, the, the current risers and the current fallers in the build-up to the draft, as well as I'm going to be doing a video with Patriots Global. That ought to be a hoot. You'll get a mock draft of what I would do the day of the draft. Don't forget, we're also going to be live streaming all three days. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be wild. Let's go ahead. Let's get to it. These are unchanged. Well, for now, until further news comes out. Uh, Trevor Lawrence to the Jags. Jets. Go with Zach Wilson. We got Trey Lance here going, well, going to the uh, Niners. So, interested. This does allow them to keep Jimmy G. Keep note that Shanahan also said, well, you never know who's going to be a, a, a live Sunday. I don't know. Is that a death threat? Uh, maybe he was posting a uh, bounty, a hit on our boy Jimmy G. So, uh interesting but yeah trey lance uh, he, he's another fun option here still i kind of lean fields but i guess we'll see when that happens so this is what we got going on at four because it too is different i got them going jamar chase with the uh the recent julio jones rumors maybe they do look to go receiver here so we're going to kind of explore that option as well because they won't be able to trade julio until till uh after june 1st because of the cap hit so maybe they go receiver, they go with Chase. I think I would still say Kyle Pitts is the option here, obviously, if they can't trade out. But if they do go Chase, how does this unfold? What are we going to be doing F5? I went with Soul. I think this picks down to Chase or Soul. Obviously, if Chase is there, I really think they're going to take Chase. I, uh, Burroughs campaigning for it. And then plus, I got that whole theory i have that they may take walker little in the second round again it's just a theory but we go with so we get protection protection for him kyle pitts obviously could be an option here i don't know we'll see i haven't really seen anything that links pitts to cincinnati just i mean burrow chase makes sense and well, helping the offensive line that makes sense as well so the Dolphins, of course, they're going to go Pitts. I really like this. I think Pitts is going to be their guy. Uh, I don't know how they'll manage to get him. Will they, can they orchestrate a trade up to Atlanta? I don't even know what that may cost. But we went with Pitts here. Uh, and you may be like, they got Mike Gesicki. Well, look what the Patriots did with Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith. I don't think grabbing Pitts means you can't have both guys on the field at the same time. Pitts, he does have... The ability to play in the slot so maybe if they go to those three wide packages you move pits out to the slot and then you have gasicki in line so just some options there and then at seven is where i have to trade i'll go over trades at the end uh what specifically what did teams get but patriots they're the front runner to get fields at least in the better market then the panthers are actually second kind of wild uh because there's some people are assuming fields could fall and if you're the panthers why not just take fields but if darnold sucks at the beginning then oh shoot you got fields there i guess i don't know that's just me just trying to make sense of it but i think the patriots they are going to go after the guy i think they're guy i think they would love fields i think trey lance could also be the option here it, i don't know for me it's hard to believe to trade up for mac jones I think you could just kind of like, like if I'm the Broncos, I'm not trading for Mac Jones. I'm just going to sit where I'm at. If I'm trading up, it's either Fields or Lance. And if I'm any, uh, I think you can make a case for the Bears or Washington. They're, they're, they'll probably just try to trade up for whoever that fifth quarterback is. So, yeah, in this, we got Fields. I think Fields is a great option because I think you could start him immediately. Uh, if you're the Patriots, 
obviously you're going to give Cam Newton a go with things. If those go south, you could give you could plug in Fields opposed to Lance, who I I feel better about uh, if things are going bad with Newton than just keep on keep on. You know what I'm saying? So I'd rather I'd rather just sit Lance in that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at eight, I got. Panthers going Rashawn Slater. I really think they need... I think offensive line is kind of, well, what they have to go here. I don't really see them, them going other any other route if it's Slater or Sewell, depending on whoever falls here. Uh, yeah, so we're going Slater. Uh, Cowboys, this one's also... Or no, it's the Broncos. They take Mac Jones. Drew Locke sucks. Sorry, I'm not a truther. Uh, Patrick Sertain going to the Cowboys this is another one that's kind of set in stone. Or at least it feels that way. And then at 11, the Giants, they take Devontae, Devontae Smith. There is a rumor out there, uh, I guess it was a deleted tweet, that uh, the Chargers and the Giants were talking about a trade down. That could happen. Uh, but as anywhere I go, I see that Smith is top of the Giants' board. Grab Danny Dimes, more weapons. I'm totally cool with that. I'm A-OK -okay with that. Grabbing a guy like Smith, they grabbed a Galladay. Maybe they're telling, hey, Danny Dimes. You've been pretty good downfield. Throw downfield more, please. Smith could do that, but he's also like uh, Smith's a great route runner. He could do it really from any level. And then at a 12, JC Horn. I just don't think Jalen Waddle would be the guy. He'd be too similar to what they got in Jalen Rager. Rager, he sounds like he's operating the slot there. To me, you're kind of throwing that first round pick away. Granted, yes, Waddle's a better, better prospect. But I don't think they'd be ready to move off that just yet if they uh, go in with Waddle. I don't think they're ready to move off Rager. So instead, they get J.C. Horn to help the defense get someone across from Darius Slay. We go with that. Um, and that's more of a belief on my part. Uh, I just don't think they're going to be high on Waddle. I think it's either Devontae Smith or J.C. Horn with this pick. And then... I got the Chargers going Elijah Vera Tucker, not Christian Darsa. I'm all, I'm going to experiment with uh, this as well because sounds like the NFL might not be as high on Darsa. They kind of just view him as a, like a tier two tackle, uh, but they are high on Vera Tucker. I see Vera Tucker going in the top 15 to 16 in every mock. I've only heard kind words about Elijah Vera Tucker. I mean, he's a good prospect and all too. So uh, maybe some of the NFL believes he can play left tackle. So he goes here with the Chargers. And then you might be thinking, oh, okay, Darius out of the Vikings makes a ton of sense. Uh, no, I actually have them trading out with the Dolphins. Dolphins trade up because Flores, it sounds like he's very high on Micah Parsons. You could also make the case for Waddle here. But based on what I've heard about uh, Parsons and Flores, uh, Flores loving Parsons, I think they trade up and they grab him for their defense. Uh, I know Waddle has the Tua connections and whatnot, and I've seen Tua go, uh, or I've seen, not Tua, but Waddle go as high as the sixth pick. I'm going to go with Parsons, though. I'm going to go with Parsons. Uh, Parsons, he's a top 10 talent. So Dolphins, they're leaving the first round with two top 10 uh, players. And then Detroit Lions, they go Jalen Waddle. Uh, it's just, honestly, I'm taking the best player available. That's me if I'm the Lions. They do need receiver. So they grab Waddle, he can instantly get put there in the slot. And then the Cardinals, I actually went with Greg Newsome. I'm telling you, he's getting a lot of hype around the league. This guy, I think he's going to go top 20. And the Cardinals, they're desperate for corner. So maybe they go with Newsome. He's really the, like, there's only three corners that I think that are first round locks at this point. With Farley, the back issues really, really could hurt his stock. And then 17 Raiders, Tevin Jenkins, not Darisaw. I think uh, Jenkins is just, this is such a John Gruden, Mike Mayock pick. It, it's going to happen. Plus, they got a real need at right tackle. And then at 18, Jalen Phillips, not Christian Darisaw. I'm telling you, man, if, if it's true, if the if the league's not high on Darisaw, I, I think Darisaw's top 15 guy. Then I think realistically, Phillips could be a pick here. He could be a pick at 14, too. I've seen him in a ton of mocks at uh, 14. Because Phillips, really the only downside to him is the concussion history. But that hasn't been an issue for the last two years. So they grabbed Phillips here. They kind of were looking for another edge rusher. That's why they brought in Yannick Nagakwe last year. I don't think... I think they 
I think Wonham's going to end up just being a rotation guy. They they probably like what they got from him last year, but I still think they're searching for someone opposite of Daniel Hunter. Phillips could be that. And then at 19, Washington goes Xavier Collins. I like JOK at this pick, but uh, going through a lot of Washington press, I don't know how accurate they may be, but a lot of them say, hey, Collins is a Ron Rivera guy. They He, he could be someone that they plug in, in the middle. Uh, was it John Bosick? He's on the last year of his deal. They see, uh, was it Cole Honey? Uh, was it Cole Honeycomb, right? Um, other Nebraska cat. I I can't believe I forgot his. I'm forgetting his name. How can I be forgetting his name? Yeah, Cole Honeycomb or Holcomb. Holcomb. Oh my gosh. I, Honeycomb is one of my like favorite cereals. So, my bad. But they see him more as a, a, a coverage linebacker. That kind of shocks me. I don't. I think he average at best in coverage. But they grab Collins, who does have that coverage capability. He's got great pass rush and upside. Thing is, I don't really see him as a mic. That could just be me. But I don't know. They, uh, we go with them here. Again, this is predictive. The Bears are going to go Christian Darisaw. The fall stops. I can't see him getting past 20. I think Christian Darisaw is quite, quite good. I think he boasts some good athleticism. Um, he played a, he did play in an RPO heavy scheme there at Virginia Tech, but he was very good at getting the second level. He he has a very definite um, punch. He is good at getting into the strike zone of defenders, like straight up t kills momentum. He brings guys to a stop. And then I still believe I still believe in Chris Ballard training down, and I still believe the Saints as the top guys. To because Loomis he loves to trade up. I think they're gonna really try to get top corner in this class. Farley he fits the bill there. I know the injury history. I still that I still don't think that takes him out of the first round. A guy with his type of skill set, his type of talent, I can't see him coming out of the first round. And then the Tennessee Titans, Rashad Bateman. I love Bateman. Bateman's the fourth receiver on my board, and I'm seeing a lot of. Uh, Tennessee mocks going with Bateman. So maybe the NFL isn't as low on Bateman as I believe them to be. I love Bateman. He has the ability to play inside or out. Phenomenal route runner. Great addition. And then at 23, I got Quiddy Pay going to the Jets. I really think they should go edge rusher with this pick. Grab one of the top guys, especially if you see Phillips go, go off the board. It's like, oh, okay, man, let's try to at least grab a, a Quiddy Pay or Jason Owe. Um, in this case, it's Quiddy Pay, who is the top guy on my board. I love to see him opposite of Carl Lawson. That's a scary pass rushing duo. And then at 24, Pittsburgh Steelers, Najee Harris. This probably ain't changing in terms of predictive. I can see it happening. One running back, typically at least one, goes in the first round nowadays. Uh, Najee Harris could be that guy. And then Jeremiah Wusokoamora. This is one I saw um, brought up. If he falls, like the Jags could look at him as more of a box safety slot. Maybe they paid all that money to, uh, was it Rashawn Jenkins? Really believing he's a free safety. Really believing he could cover deep. I don't believe it. Maybe they do. They grab JOK to be a box slash slot guy. And then at 26, Cleveland Browns, Christian Barmore. Um, this sounds like this is the furthest Barmore could fall. I, I, re, I would take him in the top 20. I think he's great. Uh, but, yeah, uh, kind of makes sense. They got rid of Sheldon Richardson. He would be a nice r rotation guy there with uh, Jordan Elliott. They still have Malik Jackson and um, Andrew Billings. So that's a nasty, nasty defensive front there in Cleveland. 27, Trevon Merrig to the Ravens. The Ravens love their safeties. And, since Earl Thomas left town, man, they really don't have a top safety. I like I like Chuck Clark, but they they could they could definitely bring some juice to the position. Merrig does that, and then at twenty eight, Samuel Cosme. Again, since Alex from the uh, Hail Mary podcast brought this up, that Colts they love guys with that that nine Raz score. Cosme had it like a nine point eight, nine point nine. I really like the fit of Cosme there at left tackle. I really think this 
that they're if they don't trade out of the first round completely that they're going to go tackle they're going to go edge one of the two so we're going with cosme i think cosme got top 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 20 uh potential man i'm, I'm big fan of cosme 29 jamin davis i'm just loving this pick more and more they really want to find someone that 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 could come in be solid in the middle and cover a lot of ground davis he's long he's fast his pro day unbelievable and packers they love to run those sub packages so someone like davis would kind of fit if you're going to run just one linebacker on the field you want him to when you want it to be a linebacker like jamin davis and then at 30, the Bills go Jason Owe. I don't think Owe falls out of the first round. A lot of people don't believe he's a first round talent. I can't see it. I the, the after how he tested, and the dude's win rate was good. Just because he had no sacks doesn't mean crap, man. He just helped others around him acquire those sacks. That's why some people are really high on Shock Shockatoni. I personally don't think he's that good of a prospect. <laughs> But Oway, on the other hand, man, I'm a big fan of Oway. And then I got Landon Dickerson going at 31. I'm sorry, Ravens fans. I know some Ravens fans don't love this, but Landon Dickerson, I'm telling you, that I, I, I feel it. A lot of teams are going to look at Dickerson, love, love the character, love the way he plays. Ravens, Brent Butters, their run game. They need a center. Landon Dickerson, this just seems like a Landon spot. That or with the Steelers, ironically, both. AFC North teams. As for the Bucks, though, I have them going. Elijah Moore. Uh, I I forgot who I gave him yesterday in the mock draft. I think this this pick could go anyway. It could even be running back. Could be Carlos Basham. Um, you could say Elijah um, or Aziz Ojolari, but parent reports about knee concerns, uh, which. I haven't really found anything founded on that outside of an ACL injury. He had his senior year in high school. But think about this. They're not bringing back AB. I know they got a lot of receivers, but they bring in Elijah Moore to be their AB in this offense, especially with Chris Godwin potentially leaving next season. I know that they got Tyler. They'll make room, dude. They'll make room for these guys. It's never a bad thing to have a ton of playmakers in the receiving game. Elijah Moore is just that but i'm only doing the first round today uh let's go ahead let's take a look at the trades i'm gonna zoom out here real quick uh so for the fields trade i had them give up a second and a fourth uh and i actually think this is pretty cheap to trade up to seven uh but i just don't see the patriots offering another first rounder i don't think they're gonna give up their first rounder next season as for the dolphins uh, they trade a first and a fourth. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. So they uh, receive a first and a fourth. The Vikings, they get the Dolphins' second, second round pick. So uh, to move up four spots, um, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and then I still have it being the third round pick here. Um, yeah, I just expect any mock. I think the Colts Saints are going to be good trade partners. Chris Ballard loves to trade down. Well, Loomis loves to trade up. It's just a match made in heaven. But that's it for the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Be on the lookout for more videos because they're a coming. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.